Hello everyone. Hello everybody. We are super happy to be here. Absolutely. Um, so some of you may have uh, wonder uh, what uh, nuclear submarine is doing at uh, DDD Europe. Uh, so uh, we are not going to talk about embedded system. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> so we won't. Uh, but uh, don't worry, the nuclear submarine will uh, emerge through the story. Absolutely. Uh, before we start, we have two books for you to win. Two books of the turn the ship around that we will talk a little bit during this talk. To win this book, all you have to do is to tweet as hell with the hashtag DDDUI. And to cover our session, you can make jokes about us. You can uh, be, say smart things or whatever, just taking picture. And at the end of the, of the session, we will have a look with Pauline and say on Twitter who should join uh, and got the, the, wing, the, the books. All right? So autonomy will be the main topic of today. Yes. Before that, let's introduce ourselves. Yes, uh, so this is uh, Thomas Pierrin. Uh, he's been a developer, coach, architect for almost uh, 25 years now. And um, he loves DDD so much that uh, he uh, created uh, the meetup DDD no, Friends. Not created, organized. Organized <laughs> for <laughs> seven years. Yeah. And, um, and he's been uh, our VP of engineering at Agicap uh, for one year and, and a half. half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, what else? Uh, when, you, yeah. when you're not working, uh, you like to cook awesome meals for your family? I think this is uh, <laughs> obvious. But, uh, yeah. uh, thank you, Pauline. Pauline Jamin, uh, she's uh, doing development since uh, nine years old. So, uh, nine, nine years. Um, and uh, she is one of the most talented tech lead I uh, had worked with recently. Uh, and she likes many things like DDD, domain driven design, uh, in Agicap, our company. We love DDD a lot. Uh, we'll talk that, uh, about that. And uh, when she's not coding, doing architectures, and striving people, she's skiing, jumping, diving, uh, <laughs> running, skiing in, into the Alps where, where she lives. OK, autonomy. We yes, so uh, we are going to talk about it, autonomy, obviously. But uh, you need to understand it in uh, our context, which is uh, the one of a scale-up. So what is a scale-up? It's a startup that has uh, validated its business uh, model and that uh, has clients that pays for the project. So we're not earning, mo we're earning money, but not enough to be uh, uh, independent. Cash flow positive. Cash flow positive, thank you. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's this context of hyper growth. So for example, when I joined uh, Agicap two years and a half ago, uh, we were like 12, maybe uh, 20 people in the tech department. And now we are more than uh, 100 people. And um, there was a week where we were onboarding like uh, four people every week. So yeah, a big uh, growth. Big challenge, big hyper growth. And, and when you are uh, growing like this, it's a little bit obvious that autonomy is a must because uh, if you need to ask one chief for every decision, mm. you will not be able to, to, to move forward and to give a, provide value or efficiency. Yeah, instead of hyper growth, you will have hyper frustration. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of hyper frustration. Maybe yeah. why did you start working in a startup? Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, I decided to join a startup because I was working for a big uh, insurance company in France. And it was like uh, <laughs> very complicated when uh, we wanted to, to do things like, you know, asking uh, a lot of people, a lot of teams, uh, the security team, uh, teams, uh, a lot of people uh, to do a new thing. So I, I was feeling like I needed to go to a, a more, uh, I don't know, exciting pace, environment. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you, why did, why did you join a startup? Uh, for the money. Okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, uh, uh, as a consultant before, I was uh, the impression that I help people and customers to, to make success and to have great project and great situation. And it was like uh, making the harvest of the of the grapes and never took the time to mm -hmm. to, to drink the wine. Mm. when everything was done. So I, I, I was looking for more skin in the game position, situation. Uh, that's the main reason. OK. Maybe the money. So maybe. <laughs> uh, and also, in previous situations, I've made a, a lot of uh, time. I spent a lot of time in, in, in big organization where also the, the decision process you were describing was a, a real nightmare. You need to, to, mm. to gather uh, more than uh, 20 persons for every decision to mm. make a round one, round two, round three, etc. Just to take simple decisions, it mm. was really frustrating. 
Uh, mm. The autonomy was a challenging topic, I would say, in such uh, organizations. Yeah. yeah. Is it an understatement? <laughs> What, uh, or do you have any uh, little stories you want to share about that? Oh, okay. M maybe one. Uh, once I was uh, working in a corporate investment bank, uh, working and, and building a trading application, uh, yellow stickies here. Uh, and we needed to, to make it work, we needed some information about financial instruments. To do so, we needed to gather information through a corporate data referential, a golden source for the whole bank, uh, providing that. And uh, so we used to fetch data to that central uh, repository, central referential. Uh, and from time to time, there was some missing information or incorrect information that led us to have a really strong issue in, into production. So uh, in order to fix that, all we have to do was to fill a ticket to the uh, central team in order for them to fix uh, that financial instrument is not uh, it, it was like a bonds uh, IRS swap stuff like that was was is not correct uh, and it led us to some situations but they were fixing that but eventually after a month or sometimes more of validation of whatever so we needed to to, to to survive into that situation so we had figured out to add a new local referential inside our applications uh, to store all the overrides of, of that uh, so we can update whenever we want uh, what the market view were saying before the official referential was uh, working. So basically our application was uh, fetching the official information first then do we have a, another ride on our local referential and then making the synthesis and ta -da, we were able to, to work. So that was one way of surviving into that uh, lack of autonomy, I would say. Yeah, because one month is very long. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah for, for traders, yeah, it's, it's really, really long. What about you in uh, your previous experience? Do you have a... Yeah, I have a story. It's uh, similar than yours. Uh, I was working uh, with a colleague, Jack, and, uh, and his team, and uh, they had this new um, uh, project, this new uh, product they wanted to to put in production. Uh, but at the time, uh, the SRE uh, team, so the, the ops teams, was working on a big uh, platform migration. So uh, all teams were waiting uh, for them to finish and uh, gi giving them space to finish uh, so that uh, we could uh, go uh, further. And, um, and these teams, they had uh, like objectives. They wanted to go to production now. So they said, OK, but just let's do it ourselves so let's uh, put in projection and uh, build our platform ourselves and uh, and not wait for uh, the SRE team to to finish so yeah the SRE, SRE is kind of ops people that are coding doing architecture it's just for for everyone to be uh, to yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so the SRE ops teams, DevOps, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they said, uh, okay, well, Jack's team, we are going, we go, we are going, sorry, to do it ourselves. So they did, and uh, they actually uh, put everything in production uh, by the same, with just a little bit help of uh, one SRE guy because they needed the stuff like password, uh, some stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds a little bit. They, they were lucky, or sounds a little bit. Too good to be true? Uh, actually, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, for them, it was best life ever. But uh, for the other teams, not so much. Because, for example, my team, we were waiting for the SRE platform to, to be built. And uh, because uh, they didn't realize it at the time, but uh, they were asking a lot of questions to the SRE guy. Uh, which was just here to help them, help them a little bit at the end. But uh, uh, in fact, he was doing a lot of work uh, for them and uh, he was struggling uh, to say no because he's just a nice guy. <laughs> and so he took a uh, delay uh, on, on his work for the migration. So the whole migration was uh, delayed and all the teams that were waiting, uh, we, have to, we had to wait more. So yeah, Jack's teams was living his best life, but for the rest of us, it was not uh, as fun. Yeah, everyone uh, was waiting much more than yeah. they were expecting uh, to, to, to do. Did, did you already experience something like that? Into a situation like that? Yeah. And you have to wait uh, for not so much, okay. Um, and what about you, your story? Uh, as you were saying, actually, this uh, situation was not really good. We have two issues. First one, that uh, whenever we fix that, uh, the rest of the company 
could not manage to benefit and to leverage on our uh, new versions. So fat panda for them, but uh, also some use cases we needed to have a like a coherent vision of the street from our uh, application standpoint and from other services that we were related to, and these uh, were uh, consuming the uh, official golden source. Uh, so we had some discrepancies. It, no, it was leading some bad situations. Uh, also, we had a really naive implementation of our local referential, meaning worst situation was really naive. If we had override once for an instrument on our local uh, application, if the official referential was adding new things after, we didn't leverage on, on, on that. You can say, okay, it was really naive. Yes, but actually we didn't uh, manage and we were not expecting to, to build a local referential. We had to make it on a run while delivering value for other stuff and discovering that uh, we had to wait one month. So uh, yeah, bad, bad situations. Maybe, I don't know Pauline for you, but maybe uh, yeah. autonomy is a more complex uh, topic than we thought. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, indeed. And uh, why I suggest is that we look at uh, one of the world's leaders uh, uh, book about autonomy. So uh, uh, David Market, the one who wrote uh, the famous uh, "Turn the Ship Around." Uh, Maybe a short question: Who already read that book? Can you please raise your hand? Okay, ten percent. Maybe ten percent yes, of the room. Okay. Yeah. So uh, David Market is a Navy uh, commander in the U.S. Army, and um, and when we, he arrived uh, at uh, at his first uh, job, like he was given his first uh, nuclear submarine, uh, he was uh, like uh, very. Uh, a surprise <laughs> about what he found because uh, can you, uh, because uh, yeah <laughs> the the management style was more like this so uh, pure uh, leader follower approach uh, he realized that uh, every decision has to go through him uh, he realized that people were uh, not motivated at all uh, he realized that uh, hey I'm going to be a major bottleneck because everything has to go through me uh, and. Uh, yeah, it was a he was a little bit uh, astonished by that, and he, he thought, uh, okay, this is a pure leader follower follower model, and uh, and people are really uh, demotivated, and it can be dangerous, right? Because when you are in a nuclear submarine, uh, every little mistake, every little uh, delay uh, can have uh, big consequences. Yeah, every disengagement from someone may yeah. impact everyone. And more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nuclear submarine. Yeah. Um, so, so he, the first thing he, he, he said to himself was, "Okay, I have to stop the fo leader follower approach." And uh, in his book, he said uh, something like, uh, "I want to be able to have a, a heart attack in my submarine, and uh, the, the, the ship doesn't sink." <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So the question is, how do uh, I turn the ship around? Uh, what can I do to change this uh, leader follower model? To experience a lot of things. Yeah. So that's the whole uh, subject of his book, actually, uh, how he did that. Uh, so he was given uh, a submarine, uh, a legacy submarine, uh, the USS uh, Santa Fe. And uh, actually, he managed to, to do it, to, ch to turn the ship around, uh, because uh, at the end, uh, all his uh, people on the, the submarine were recognized in the Navy as uh, good uh, leaders. Uh, so what we are going to do is not uh, read all the book, but maybe uh, just uh, gi giving um, uh, some quotes we thought are very interesting in uh, the context of uh, uh, yeah. software development. Yeah, some highlights. So the first one is uh, give responsibility and make leaders. So obviously, if you don't give uh, responsibility to people, um, they cannot be uh, leaders. So the thing is, um, for example, uh, if you if you arrive in a team and you say to the team, okay, I'm the architect or I'm the tech lead or whatever, and uh, I want you to implement uh, this architecture, and you don't say why, you don't say uh, <laughs> why you made you made the choice, and you don't let people uh, have responsibilities, just have to do it. Uh, well. Uh, we're all going to be uh, demotivated, <laughs> right? Uh, so the first thing is to, is, to, is to give responsibility to people. And the, f the second thing is uh, fight your instinct to always want to take control. 
So the same example, uh, you, you are in a room uh, making a discussion about architecture, and uh, if you don't let uh, people uh, express themselves and, and like uh, uh, offering solutions, and you, you just say, uh, okay, uh, no, no, it's not good, I already experienced uh, that architecture, it won't work, and you always uh, want to take control over things, people will just be uh, demotivated and uh, not... Working, not wanting to work with you anymore. <laughs> Donc, passive aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's normal. Uh, now those things is to give goals. Yeah, and give goals and not procedures. So it may be a little bit uh, abstract, but uh, uh, giving goals to to uh, to uh, to make something is not the same as giving as telling how to do it. So the thing is, okay, I want you to uh, I don't know to release in production uh, every day but you're not going to say how to do it because people have to find how to do it and uh, to, to try. Uh, either way, you're just giving uh, orders and uh, there is disengagement. Uh, giving, instruction, giving instructions, you uh, create uh, in, um, uh, dependencies with, with people. So, uh, yeah, that's not uh, the way. Uh. Uh, also, an important topic is whoever has the information has the authority to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. In a uh, uh, nuclear submarine, uh, the time to market the, the responsiveness of your actions, depending on, on the, the triggers, uh, is really important. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you have to let go and to let the local uh, decisions happen. Uh, otherwise, you can have some issue. And to make it possible, by default, is yes. All you need to do is to ask people to tell their intent. I intend to turn right. I intend to, uh, I don't know, I'm not a submarine expert, but I intend to do this or to do that. You say it out loud, and if no one is saying no, this is the way that we will follow, uh, uh, and if there is something that is dangerous, and like uh, David Marquet was uh, the, the, the responsible of this submarine, he had the uh, ultimate choice of saying, no, no, please, don't do that. You, I have any information that you don't have. Stop, abort, please, and, and uh, start. So by default, you don't need to have a command of a chain of command that to be requested in order for every decision to be validated, validated. So, Default is yes. Yeah, what I like to say in the context of work, obviously, is uh, don't uh, don't ask permission, ask forgiveness. Yeah, so we. Uh, That's we better. <laughs> it's, be it's better to, to try and to make mistake and ask for forgiveness than just do nothing. And the, uh, another quote is create space for thinking. So like I said before, when you are doing uh, uh, meetings, uh, if you don't let people uh, just speak and, uh, and try and express themselves, uh, obviously uh, they're not go going to, to offer uh, solutions. So you, you, as a, a leader or as a manager or, or an architect, you, are, you have to, to let space for others. So to fight your instinct to talk <laughs> and to always uh, give a solution on the platters and just uh, let people uh, express themselves. Otherwise, you will frame the, the, yeah. the discussion, you will frame the, yeah, the decision making, and uh, people were sometimes reluctant to say no to the chief or to someone that has authority and say, let's yeah. do that. Well, no, no, it's more complicated. So let the space, don't yeah. say anything, let people express themselves, and, uh, and after, if you had something to add, yeah. you can add. And it gets worse before it gets better. So this is one of the lessons. Uh, changing people uh, is always uh, like a big thing. Change management is very difficult. So uh, obviously, when you're going to to turn uh, the ship around and uh, move things, uh, it's going to get worse. But uh, eventually, uh, nothing is uh, impossible. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, with a lot of motivation and small changes at the time, it can be, it can be done. Don't be discouraged. Yeah. At the very beginning, it will be hard. Uh, it makes me think about uh, Ken Beck tweets once, saying programmers get so focused on how our job is hard that we forget to ask what would make our job easy. The ability to take stand and to, to have a, a different view about our, our, our daily uh, job. Mm. Uh, so sometimes something may seem you impossible, but if you have a new perspective, a new standpoint, you, you can change. 
And culture is one of the most complicated things to change. Uh, and we are talking about culture uh, here. So, uh, mm. so that's it. So that's it for the for, for the book. Mm. Uh, what about the Agicap submarine? Uh, I must admit that when I arrived at, uh, at Agicap, I had this all this stuff in mind. I've read the book. I've think about it. I've made my homework before before joining a, a scale up as a VP of engineering for the first time in my life. So I was a lot of uh, ideas. Um, after taking a tour of the submarine of the of the company, after taking talking to everyone, I, there are a lot of things that. Stri uh, strikes me, uh, maybe the, the relationship between the product and the tech mm. was really intense and, and on daily basis, really uh, something that I didn't ma uh, experience in the past so, as much. Uh, also, the product, um, the product managers were. Um, uh, we didn't have we don't have uh, product owners. We have only product managers, meaning that these are the same people making the discovery and making the delivery with the squad. So it had a lot of uh, value because you don't have a loss uh, in translation between people, mm -hmm. uh, one's making the discovery, the other making the delivery. So that was uh, something that we really like. Also, uh, Luca Bertola, the CTO, uh, was uh, the owner of the product and the tech. So for some arbitrations, uh, it was really interesting. We had someone that may be able to decide for the whole product uh, and tech uh, division. And uh, he's still his. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. He still continue to do to do so and, and to do it uh, right. Uh, the complexity, the essential complexity of the domain, uh, really uh, strikes me. And last but not least, everyone was fan of domain-driven design. Uh, the product managers, the tech, uh, actually the tech. Uh, spread that to the product managers, but uh, it was a really interesting discussions. Set on the other hand, yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, uh, I heard some stuff and, and I've seen some behaviors that really made me think that okay, if I go fast on that autonomy uh, initiative, uh, maybe I will create a monster. Uh, I, I need to take care of something before. Yeah. So, so a monster, really? <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe I'm a little bit exaggerating, uh, but uh, I heard lots of people uh, and people that were here from the very beginning when it was a startup and they were tame, saying the good old days it was bef better before, etc., etc. Uh, I can't recognize the company and things like that because uh, for, for me they, they were a little bit scared. Uh, of that, and I was saying, if okay, if I give the driver seat to these people, we won't uh, scale. Uh, there is something that we uh, it was better before. Uh, very uh, um, uh, thinking about the past uh, mm -hmm. again and again. So I was saying maybe we need to discuss more. Uh, and for me, it was surprising because in a previous life, all change management like this with customers, etc. Uh, VC level were reluctant to go mm -hmm. through uh, full autonomy for the teams. Here in that case, it was some developers more uh, than uh, the CTO. The CTO was full uh, sponsor for that. Uh, this was already the case when I joined. Uh, every squad may decide whenever they want to work. Uh, some were using Scrum uh, in terms of Flow. Some others were using uh, Flow, Kanban, Extreme Programming, whatever. Every squad had the opportunity to decide how they want to, to work and to delivery. Mm. So that was a, 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 nice, a nice thing. But about the scaling, actually, we were not um, quite a startup uh, anymore. And we were... Uh, in the process of becoming a, a scale-up and uh, with new concerns, new challenges. Uh, and very often, uh, the stuff that we're working when you are 10 people in the company won't scale at all. And you need to change some stuff in the way you work when you are 100 or 500. Uh, it's, that's natural. But for some people, that was really uh, complicated to, to, to manage. Uh, so... Uh, I was like here and saying, OK, I need to prepare and to talk a lot more with people to prepare that, because otherwise it will be uh, hurt 
uh, these people and uh, and the company and uh, it will be complicated. Yeah. So the idea was to prepare people before we can exp experiment, uh, before eventually we can turn the ship around on that topic and uh, yeah. vacances and voila. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, that's what we, you, you did uh, by yeah. preparing people. Actually, uh, Thomas uh, uh, went to, to see uh, each squad uh, and uh, sharing uh, verbatims like uh, uh, things he heard uh, from, uh, from, you know, uh, in a corner of the company or, <laughs> so, or anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so he, he came to us to explain, hey, I heard this thing, uh, I heard uh, uh, someone saying that, uh, what do you feel about that, uh, what are your thoughts, uh, are you sharing the same, um, the same uh, uh, thinking, or do you think it's, uh, it's uh, no, nobody thinks that in the company, it's, uh, it's not... Uh, uh, just to understand uh, if people uh, were ready to, to move forward with autonomy. Uh, the idea was to explicit the implicit hmm. that I've heard here and there. And for every squad, with more psychological safety than if you were making, having this discussion all together with all the, the, the crews. Uh, so with, within every squad to say, what do you think about if you are a colleague that's saying, uh, are you sure that we are allowed to join a guild? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about? And uh, r related to the autonomy topic, uh, will be helpful, will be hurtful? Uh, what do you think? And uh, it was really interesting uh, a time, I would mm. say. Uh, it led to great discussions. And then, uh, when people were ready <laughs> to go, uh, we decided to, to try things. So um, uh, this part is more about our exploration, what we did and uh, how it worked. Yeah. <laughs> or not. Or not. <laughs> or not. So the first thing is uh, strategic uh, DDD. Uh, so I think if you're here, you already heard about it. So we organize a, a lot of uh, event storming and uh, context mapping uh, on a regular basis with uh, the product, of course. And uh, this help us to, to have uh, uh, the, the organization scaling uh, accordingly to our uh, business. Yeah, what's, what's really important. And I think that led to a discussion that we had with Eric Evans once. The, the creation of the DDD was uh, uh, due to a frustration of Eric that some teams within the, the company was working mm. were delivering fast and some others could not deliver as much as fast as, as the others. And there are lots of frustration because of regulatory in finance and things like that. So lots of good reason not to, to, to move on on the same pace. And uh, at the end of the day, all this uh, DD stuff emerged mm. from a will to make people more autonomous and to and to deliver value, uh, yes, and to be aligned with, with the domain. So here, the fact that we had that discussion with the product very mm. often uh, made us uh, remove our frontiers, our bounded context, our relationships, our API. Yeah. Uh, it's important to, to make it live. Also, we have a product that was a monolith once as a startup and then try to, uh, yeah, to, to, to improve and to grow. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this is the next uh, topic uh, we, we, uh, with this uh, context map. Uh, we had uh, one part of the product which uh, was a monolith, so we decided to, to split it to better scale, actually, uh, because it's a little bit more complicated to do a continuous delivery when you have a big uh, uh, monolith. So with uh, all this, uh, this uh, context mapping and all this event storming, we were able to, to do so. And actually, we did it... Uh, Autonomously, like uh, uh, we had something called a Christmas refactoring. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll uh, talk uh, just after. Yeah, you were going to talk uh, just after. And uh, that's when we decided okay, uh, we, we want to split the monolith because we are going to add a lot more uh, uh, business and context to, uh, to, to the product. So it's time. And this is one example of uh, one stream uh, during the Christmas refactoring where people were building uh, tools uh, using Mermaid to generate uh, every build, uh, the relationships, the dependencies among mm. and, and between uh, context, bounded context that we have uh, within the monoliths. So it was really helpful to, to make us taking decisions, to split, to modularize better, and, uh, and that's it. And we were talking that, about that just uh, uh, before. Christmas refactoring basically was a time in December where we say to the product and to the tech, we will stop delivering uh, new features for these months, and we'll take the months to clean up the mess, to clean up our rooms. Well, from the tech uh, side, if you want on the product to, to go more on the exploration and discovery side, uh, go ahead. If you want mm -hmm. to join us, uh, you be, be our guest. 
uh, guest, and uh, we've made um, a, a, a kickoff uh, session with mm -hmm. the Myro board. Uh, also, we didn't tell that, but we are a full remote uh, yeah. company from the tech perspective. The sales, etc., is all across Europe, but the tech are all over uh, France, uh, mainly. Uh, so we we took a mirror board, uh, made a, a kickoff, saying what is the most frustrating stuff you have on your daily job. Mm. Uh, so people contributed, we make some votes, and yeah. then we find some topics. Yeah. Work on and, and actually, uh, great topics like uh, uh, dynamics translations, uh, like uh, splitting the monolith, leaving documentation, like you said. Continuous uh, delivery. delivery. We started uh, yeah. to change things. Yeah. For the monolith and stuff. So it led us to many streams. And then after, people, instead of working with their own squads, uh, were uh, just during one month working all together on different streams yeah. that we, so we yeah, prioritize. We, so we choose a subject and we let people decide uh, which subjects they want to work uh, on. So yeah, we had a team of uh, fronts with back from a lot of different teams working on this subject for one month. It was really nice, actually. Yeah, we had a lot of micro front end also that emerged at that time from the front uh, mm. development perspective, allowing more autonomy uh, after uh, in terms of delivery. Uh, really, it's uh, made lots of nice uh, stuff. Yeah, and uh, actually we, we enjoyed it so much that uh, we decided to create uh, guilds because uh, at our company we have 20% uh, of our time uh, which we, we can uh, uh, allocate to do uh, uh, technical stuff, so not the delivery and feature day-to-day uh, -day job, but 20% of our time to work on the technical stuff like uh, like just we did in the like stuff we did in the Christmas factoring. Or it may be depth mitigation if if you work in a, on, a, on an API or a component that is really lots of functional or technical yeah. debt, you can decide not to work on those these transversal guilds mm. and to, to improve your situation during these 20% of Yeah, the so everyone can uh, join a guild and uh, we created a guild around uh, testing, one, uh, one around uh, continuous delivery, uh, one around uh, uh, Docker stack, yeah, uh, yeah, the Docker tools, stack, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of... Uh, cool stuff <laughs> actually yeah, yeah. and it's still going on so yeah yeah absolutely um also we had a, a major transformation regarding the release management stuff of the monolith some we have many startups within the startup so these were more greenfield and be able to do more continuous delivery from the scratch but for the monolith we had lots of constraints a lot of different topics that hurt us and prevent us to, from doing that. Uh, so we need to invest uh, a little bit more. And uh, when I arrived, uh, there had some developers that were fixing bugs instead of the uh, streamlined teams mm. that were providing uh, value. And the streamlined teams were, most of the case, uh, not aware of their production uh, health uh, so uh, it, it strikes me and I say let's let's move through uh, Ubili to run it model uh, also there are lots of things making by the ops people uh, instead of the dev so we uh, go through that that uh, yes that, that move uh, building a platform uh, co-building co a platform with the SRE uh, mm. and uh, creating a SRE initiative also SRE team and building a platform so that every dev team is now able to manage his production to deliver on its own to uh, have his metrology and uh, mm. yes uh, whatever it takes for the for the team to make the, the job so it's it takes time but uh, it's it's really a major step in, in the autonomy of, uh, of Scrum. Mm. Um, we have made some discoveries also during yeah. this experimentation. Yeah, it was not all right, <laughs> obviously. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, we can share with you uh, some uh, stuff that uh, we witnessed and uh, yeah. we were very uh, surprised. And maybe this is a more interesting part of the talk. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, let's yeah. say the but hard things. Yeah, uh, first, uh, it seems obvious, but uh, I think we need to say it. Uh, in order for this to work, to take experimentation, uh, of course, people have uh, to feel uh, safe. Uh, so they have to, to be, uh, to, we have to say, uh, maybe it's obvious, but uh, you're allowed to make uh, mistakes. You're allowed to, uh, to, yeah, to 
to, to be wrong sometimes and you won't get fired, you won't get mocked. Uh, it's okay. And uh, then, only then you can, uh, when people are feeling uh, safe in their uh, space, uh, in their um, uh, job environment, we can uh, try things and, uh, and do uh, experimentation. Yeah. This is really a prerequisite, an important prerequisite. You should not uh, go quickly through that. You should take time to, to create and to define what may set up this psychological safety within the squad and mm. within teams. Uh, yeah, one thing we witness is that uh, uh, yeah, the, the role of the engineering uh, manager is always uh, tricky, <laughs> I would say. Uh, so uh, we hired some uh, engineering manager at one time, and um, maybe the, the role was not uh, clear enough. So some of them, or some of them, sorry, uh, wanted to be more like project managers. Uh, wanted to to be the you know the, the proxy be between uh, the devs and the product and they wanted to to deal with uh, budget and stuff like this and uh, actually uh, this was not wa what we were looking for because we were looking for getting rid of uh, the heroic mode and the leader follower approach so yeah <laughs> and uh, actually uh, maybe maybe uh, a good sentence that we like is that uh, when you are a good manager you are actually uh, not needed <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah if if you are doing your job right uh, you just uh, enabling people but uh, not obviously not giving orders you are almost invisible if everything yeah. is right but you are here every time there is a a, a strong issue or a crisis or whatever yeah a good uh, manager is an invisible one <laughs> i think that we have missed here is a lack of uh, making the explicit uh, implicit, explicit, uh, and, and yeah. uh, for sure, we almost everyone thought that an engineering manager was not a product manager, except one or two people that uh, we didn't have that discussion uh, yeah. early. So it led to some uh, some complicated stuff here. A very important one for me is uh, autonomy is not a, only a matter of top-down uh, communication. One thing that is obvious to understand for everyone that uh, if you want to take a uh, relevant decision at lo lo locally within mm -hmm. your squad, etc. All, all you need is to have the context and the strategy and to have all the information so that after, uh, when you can take proper decisions with the proper uh, insights, etc. So that's obvious for everyone. If you don't have that, if you don't have the context, if you don't have the strategy, the goal, etc., uh, you can't take good local decisions, uh, not really. What was really surprising it's like um, this is not enough uh, really this is not enough uh, and for me uh, i went with the metaphor of uh, boats on the lake every team is like a boat on a lake you can say the objective of the company is to go to that island let's go let's go and every boat will take uh, his own path, his own uh, journey to, to toward that island uh, in an autonomous uh, way that's fine but if they are not communicating, if they are communicating with the top down and, and bottom up uh, to have the information, which island is it, where does it is, etc., et it's, it's okay. But if you don't communicate enough with the other teams, it's like uh, I'm, a, I'm on a boat and I would like to turn right on starboard, uh, maybe in two meters. And if I don't say I intend to turn right to the starboard, are not allowing Pauline on uh, the other boat to say, no, 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 please don't, because we are stuck and we are covered by another boat uh, uh, behind us and a, and a rock on our right. So we can't move. Please don't turn right right now. Otherwise, you will crush her and we will lead to a situation uh, like this. So uh, what was really uh, important for us is to realize that autonomy is not only having a clear goal hmm. from top down, but uh, it's a to stay connected all the time. Yeah. Really, everyone should say, I intend to, we intend to. A good example of this is uh, when we push uh, stuff in productions, uh, we are allowed to do it whenever we want. Uh, but uh, like a good practice is to, to tell uh, the support team, hey, we are going to push this in production. Maybe a little uh, phrase about what we are going to push for a big, uh, for major uh, breaking uh, components, like, uh, for example, the authentication. We are going to push this at uh, this time, approximately. And if they say, oh, no, 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 uh, we allow them to say, no, don't do this at this time, 
because we have a big uh, demo with uh, investors or, or big clients or whatever. So we don't want you to break the production at this time. It's not, <laughs> we don't want you to break the production at any time, but this time in particular, it's uh, wait more a critical. Bit. Wait a bit. <laughs> so, so maybe for us, it's okay to wait like two hours. So, but if we don't say it out loud, they won't know. Yeah. yeah, the support team can't say you that to you, star. So it's really important because autonomy. Well, autonomy is not autarky. So that's the real uh, thing. Uh, when you remember uh, Jake's team, uh, they thought uh, they were uh, living their best life uh, in autonomy, but uh, not communicating with other team and doing the thing on their own. Uh, they didn't realize that they were hurting uh, other teams. So. Maybe yeah. it's the more important thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, some people thought autonomy is okay. Give me the keys of the truck and see you next year. Yeah. This is not. This is <laughs> this not, is the not way. that. Well, autonomy is not like, like this. If you want to have a, an efficient uh, company, efficient teams, etc., etc., we need to connect, to connect, to connect. And uh, one other thing we we witness is that autonomy is not the holy grail for everyone. Uh, meaning um, some people uh, don't feel uh, great when they are given too much autonomy. Uh, they, they can be lost and that's okay because we are all different and uh, we all like different things. Uh, for example, me, I like to be autonomous. I like to go hey, 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 like this. <laughs> But some people, uh, when given given Uh, given too much autonomy, they feel lost. They, they're like, okay, but where do I start? Uh, why uh, my uh, tech lead or my manager is not telling me what to do? And uh, they feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. And uh, the goal here is to make everyone happy, right? Is to make everyone uh, move uh, without uh, obstacles. But if some people are in the back seat uh, feeling uh, lost, it's not good, right? Yeah. Some needs more guidance yeah. from the from the others, and uh, you should take care about that because uh, it's that's not socially. I don't know uh, elsewhere, but in France, that's not really social socially, socially. acceptable yeah. to say I'm not comfortable with autonomy. Everyone is supposed to be uh, willing to be autonomous, uh, etc., etc. So people will be reluctant to to talk about that, even if you in store uh, psychological safety it's really something that is strong uh, it's a strong statement to say mm, I'm not very comfortable I need more guidance etc etc but these people are doing great job also and yeah. they are part of the of the mix of a great team uh, so we should not forget them uh, absolutely and one thing that is really also important is to being very really clear about the goal you set um, yeah. some people need more specific instruction or, or, or goals. Someone like Pauline, you say just one topic, one theme, say, okay, I will, uh, I will have a look. And she will get back and say, I thought about it. We intend to do that. We intend to do this. And it's working. It's iterating. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's it. Some people need more instruction. We'll take an example of, um, you were saying 20% of our tech time Uh, is our uh, own responsibility. We can take that for many things, uh, contributing to guilds or refactoring within our teams. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was obvious and that was enough. Uh, you and I was uh, reminding everyone is uh, uh, must uh, take 20% of their time to work on tech topics and where the product uh, won't uh, try to say... Uh, Uh, don't do this, don't do that, etc., etc. Uh, continue to have the discussion with the product, mm. but you you are uh, some somehow free, and the choice of the technical debt you want to to mitigate or etc. Yeah. And for example, in my team, we decided to to took uh, Monday and Tuesday uh, every two weeks. And uh, these two days, it's like uh, on our schedule. Uh, don't uh, we don't work on the features, uh, for product features? And the product manager is uh, we ask her uh, to uh, about uh, this. She said, Ah, okay, uh, fine. Uh, uh, it's good for me. Uh, these days, I'm going I'm going to do uh, just like you. I'm going to do uh, discovery uh, stuff. And uh, so we have been uh, like this since uh, one year. I think. 
think. Yeah. So, and other teams know that these two days they can uh, come to us with uh, technical stuff because we have uh, time to explore it and we're not in the delivery uh, process. So yeah, it was, uh, we, we were doing fine, but uh, we, like, but, yeah, but because we said, okay, we have 20% uh, of our time, let's, uh, let's organize it, it to, to make it happen. But some people were very stressed about it, like uh, saying things like, uh, okay, uh, this is uh, uh, marketing uh, bullshit. bullshit. Uh, 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 they say we have 20% of the time, but I don't have it. I don't have the time. Uh, my product manager won't let me do it, etc. And in fact, what? But in fact, uh, that strikes me a lot because uh, when I was uh, listening to these people in this squad and say, me, what prevents you? To take this 20%. Oh, the product manager won't let us. We had other priorities. And say, okay, man, that's a rule. So uh, if uh, the product manager is uh, stressing you too much, uh, ask me and I will talk to, uh, to, to her or to, or to him. Uh, and this is, this is uh, the rule. So, uh, okay, we can adjust and that, but uh, this is normal. Uh, you should be able to organize yourself. And re realizing that, Lots of teams, uh, more than I thought, were struggling about that. Uh, I switched the instructions and I said to every team, okay, from now on, I would need you to tell me how you will secure your 20% of take time. Think about it for a week and I will get back to you. And I don't care if you take all your Fridays. I don't care if you take uh, two days every uh, two weeks. I don't care if you even don't want that. It's, it may be the decision of a squad. Uh, you are autonomous and you know better than me that uh, what, how the squad is, is working better. But I want you to tell me how you will secure that. Mm -hmm. And doing more uh, precise instructions to the team made them think about, oh, yes, that's right. And why don't we do that? earlier, etc. Yeah. Actually, we are uh, allowed to. Yeah, maybe so. not instruction, but uh, goals. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because specific, sorry, specific goals. Yeah, because at the beginning, the goal was too wide for some people. It was, uh, you have 20% of your time, just deal with it. And Thomas, uh, Thomas changed it by, uh, I want you to tell me how you, you are securing this 20% uh, of time. And it changes everything. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because this is... Our last uh, observation, uh, I would say our last recent observation, that uh, we said that uh, autonomy is not the everyone's holy grail. Uh, some people are not very comfortable with that. Uh, some people are really comfortable with that. Uh, Too much. <laughs> and and uh, that's fine from an uh, individual perspective. That's really fine. We need everyone. We need a diverse situation, diverse people. What we need is to have... Uh, Autonomous teams, that's really what matters. And to have autonomous teams, you can uh, succeed with a different uh, variety of personalities. Uh, and what really matters is like a pH scale in chemistry. I think there is something like a pH uh, scale for autonomy for teams. If you have too many people that are really, really super comfortable with autonomy within that team, it may work. Or you can have a war, something, like, let's go there, no, let's go there, no, let's go there. It can be a mess. Or if you have very few people uh, comfortable with that and needed more guidance, the pressure on the shoulder of these that need autonomy and that wants their teams to stay autonomous uh, without having a, a manager saying, oh, come on, this, we, you are al almost slowed down or mm -hmm. doing... Uh, uh, nothing, uh, do you need some help? So uh, these that are very uh, comfortable with autonomy within these teams with a lot of people that are not, they feel that they are alone and they are stressed because they think, come on, guys, come on, people, uh, let's do this. And uh, no, it's complicated. Yeah. So I, I think it's a delicate balance to, to, to set up and to have within teams so that everyone can have his uh, position and at the end of the day to have uh, 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 autonomous teams, which yes. is what you need to, to have when you want to be efficient as a, a company that scale and uh, that wants to still continue to be efficient yes. despite the number. So it's time to wrap up. <laughs> yeah, to wrap up. First, autonomy it's uh, independent yet connected. The I intend to, I intend to is really uh, important. And mm. this is something that we, we are very comfortable with the give me the key of the truck and see you next year. 
So really, uh, to we are part of a whole, and we need to stay connected. This is really a key uh, statement. And uh, autonomy is not everyone's holy grail, like we, like we just saw. So we are not talking about uh, an individual uh, point of view, but really about a team. So everything must be at the team level. That's 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 effectively the, the third uh, statement. Uh, since no one is uh, aiming to go full stage autonomy, yeah. what really matter is the uh, team level and, and, and let individual preserving their specificities and and their the way they they, they want to to work with. Uh, that's for 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 the three main yeah takeaways I would say yes. uh, that we have so far. We still continue to to experience. Uh, uh, have you heard of the Boy Scout tool? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. everyone. Okay, so <laughs> we we came up with like a, a little bit different tool. Uh, always uh, leave the campground uh, with more autonomous people that you have initially found. So like <laughs> <should be>, uh, <laughs> the Boy Scout uh, animator uh, rule. The Boy Scout <laughs> animator rule. Uh, I like the, your your statement. <laughs> um, that, that that's it uh, for for us. Uh, we will have a look at Twitter uh, quietly and and tell you we will want, uh, win the, these two books. Uh, we are continuing to explore, yes. to experiment uh, about that topic and lots of other topics like uh, domain driven design, obviously. Uh, so if you want to play with us one day, uh, feel free to contact us. Mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned and. Have a great uh, conference today, last day of conference. Have yeah. fun. I hope you will have more fun, uh, even more fun than we have uh, since the very beginning. And uh, thank you thank very you much for your attention. <laughs>